Consider the factors of 1,600. How many of these factors are square numbers and how do you know? And as an extension, which number below 100 has the most square factors? Okay, so I really like this task then because it gives a purpose for working out the prime factorization of a number and makes a nice link with square numbers. So how does it work then? So let's take our 1,600 and uh, decompose it into its prime factors. So take a factor of 10 out and another factor of 10. So it's 16 times 10 times 10. That's what most people would start with. And then 16 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So let's decompose that. And 10s are obviously 2 times 5 and 2 times 5. So these are all the prime factors of 1,600. Um, just made up a load of 2s and 5s. So how do we take out square factors then? Well, it's important to know that any factors taken at random will always give you a, a factor of 1,600. Here we've got 20. But 20 is not a, a square number. So how do we ensure that it's a square number? And remember the definition of a square number uh, is the result of when you multiply two numbers together, which are the same. So that means we need two piles of factors. And in both piles, these, these piles have to be the same. So for example, I could take a 2 and a 2, a 2 and a 2, and a 5 and a 5, say. And this is a pile of prime factors. And so is this one. So when I multiply them together, I'm bound to get a square number because this is 20. This is 20, and when I do 20 times 20, I get a square number, which is 400. So the question is, how many different piles, how many, how many pairs of piles can I make where each, where each pile is the same? So the obvious starting point is 2 times 2, which is 4. And the, the largest square number will actually be the number itself, which will be 1,600, 40 times 40. But in between that, there's a series of other square factors that you can pull out. So can you find them all? Right then, so now we know the method to find a square factor, make those two equal piles, we can record our results systematically in a table and try and find all these square factors. Now, the important thing to notice is that the number of twos and the number of fives we have must be an even number, so we can split those factors into two even piles. Now, the first one is if I have zero twos and zero fives, which would give me the factor of... 1. And every number has that factor, obviously. And let's build them up now. Um, so what if I have two twos as my prime factors? Well, that would give me a factor of 2 times 2, which is 4. What if I have four twos, another even number, 1, 2, 3, 4? Well, that would give me a prime, uh, that would give me a square factor of 16. Or I might have all six of the twos, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And that will give me a square factor of 64. Okay, let's start introducing some fives now then. So what if I just have the fives exclusively? So five times five I'm allowed, which would give me 25 as a square factor. Um, and what about combinations of twos and fives together then? So two twos and two fives. And that will obviously give me 10 times 10, 100. Uh, what if I have four twos? One, two, three, four, and two fives. So that's going to be 100 times 2 times 2, so 400. And then finally, the largest square factor is where I use all of them. So it's going to be both 5s and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 2s, which is the number itself. It's all prime factors used, which is 1,600. So this is an exhaustive list of all the square, uh, the square factors of 1,600. Um, obviously, this task can be extended to, to larger numbers. Uh, which number below 100 has the most square factors? And also, you don't need to stick with square numbers as well. Uh, the same method can be extended to look for cube numbers as well. You're just looking for three groups of numbers, which are all the same there, rather than, rather than two, two groups. So uh, have a play around the task and see what you can come up with.